Hello, beautiful souls. My name is Jesse, and welcome to my Tiny Talks podcast, the show where we'll dive into self love, inner child healing, and discovering your soul's purpose. I look forward to chatting with you every single week and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's Tiny Talk. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of Tiny Talks. I am so excited and eager to dive into today's content with you guys. I don't know if it's because spring is in the air, if there's just a sense of just refreshingness. And I just feel like the air is a little bit lighter these days. And I've just been on such a mission of just improving myself in all areas of my life. I've decided to just show up differently by going to yoga again, which is something that I know that I enjoy doing, but wasn't doing for a long time. I've been sticking to routines because I find routines is something that really helps us just calm our nervous system down, which is an episode that's going to be coming out later this month. And I just feel like the way we look at food and the way we appreciate food and gratitude and all those things just really allows us to humble ourselves and also raise our self-awareness. And the reason that I share all that with you guys is because, A, as always, I like to be honest and transparent with all my listeners because I do think that we are a community and I do share a lot with you guys. And I think that it's important that I'm honest with where I'm at in every step of the journey. And recently, I've just been focusing largely on self-awareness. And so today I'm going to be diving into specifically why self-awareness is so important. And this could be a podcast that could go on for infinity because I think that this is a subject that really is kind of the mission of life, right? Beginning to discover who your true self is, becoming self-aware of yourself. I think a lot of us go through life very much on autopilot. I know that I was living my life in a survival mode pretty much up until last month, which was when something switched in my mind that I recognized that That wasn't working for me anymore, and I decided to let go of some things that I had been holding on to for a long time. Now, again, I will just note that that did take a long time. That didn't just happen at the flick of a a wrist. However, when we begin to become more self-aware, we're able to give ourselves more grace to actually find gratitude and to slow down in the run of a day. Because oftentimes, so many of us are just operating, like I said, out of that state of autopilot, where we wake up and we do the same things and then we go to work and then we pick up the kids or we get groceries, make dinner, wind down at the end of the day, go to bed and wake up and do it all over again, oftentimes without giving ourselves that self-validation or having any sense of self-awareness, which really can start to chip away at our life and start to chip away at our mental health if we don't bring awareness to it. And I think a huge thing that I also want to say is that it's never too late with anything in life absolutely anything, but specifically for today with becoming more self-aware. I think we often think that we've gotten to a place in our life and it's worked for us so far. So why would we want to change anything? Because change is scary and it means that we have to put in the work. But I guess the question that I would also have for you is why not? Why would you not want to become the best version of yourself? Why would you want not want to become more self-aware? But because becoming more self-aware doesn't only positive, positively affect you, that also radiates onto other people because you're able to show up differently. And so for today, I'm going to dive into kind of 10 benefits or 10 shifts that we can have when we begin to become more self-aware. The first one that I want to share with you guys, which is Kind of weird to say, but it's something that I've noticed a big shift in, especially in me personally, now that I've recently become more self-aware of myself, is that we're allowed, or it almost opens a door to give us permission to have more empathy towards other people. And I think that this was something that I didn't really recognize that I was doing necessarily wrong, but that I was so caught up in my head and in my own life that I very much didn't have the capacity to take on anybody else's emotions or troubles or to really hear people. And I think that oftentimes we think that we hear people, but our mind is still going constantly. So somebody could be telling me something and I'm acknowledging it, but I'm not fully present. And the more that we can become more self-aware of our own emotions and our own things, we're able to switch that empathy and to actually show up differently towards other people. Because the more empathy that we have towards other people, 
That's one of the most important benefits of self-awareness. Because when we have the skills to be more empathetic, it enables us to build better relationships. And when we're building better relationships that are in alignment with us and resonate with us, that also boosts our self-confidence. And that just keeps going back and forth into each other. Those often trickle into each other. So again, more empathy towards others. We're able to look out of the lens differently when we're more self-aware of our own baggage that we carry. We're able to have more grace of what we've gone through, so we're able to hold space for other people who may need us. But if we're just tapped out and we don't check in with ourselves to know that we're tapped out, we might not be showing up as the best versions of ourselves for those that we love and care about. So going off the empathy for others, the second point that I have on why self-awareness is important is it because it allows you to have better listening skills. So remember when I was saying, you know, when someone's telling us something and our mind is still flowing, I think that when we're able to have the conscious mindfulness to be present, we're able to listen differently because our body isn't somewhere else and our mind isn't somewhere else. And that's the thing about self-awareness. We are able to know where our body and mind is in time in that present moment. And if we're not picking up that our mind and our body is already thinking about tomorrow or is stuck in yesterday, we're often not actually listening. We're hearing the words, but we're not actually hearing what they're saying or what they mean. And better listening skills is a characteristic of self-awareness, but it's also just a benefit of self-awareness. Because when we're able to hold that space and actually hear people, and again, we're able to build that empathy... We're showing up better for ourselves, but again, an example of how we can show up better for those that we love and care about. Better listening skills is also something that could really come into play in your workplace or at a meeting or in your business to actually listen to the needs of people, to actually hear what people are saying so you're able to fill those voids. Actually showing up and listening and listening with intention is something that I think that a lot of us don't do. I do think technology has a large responsibility for that because I think a lot of us hide behind our keyboards, hide behind our phones, and so we don't actually have to listen. We can just read and reply. And that often just allows us to go through the flow of things without actually hearing what somebody is saying. The third one that I have for you guys is that it improves critical thinking skills. So when you start to become more self-aware or beginning that journey, you have to get really honest with yourself. And that's, I think, what makes it quite scary because you have to get honest, honest with yourself and your actions because you have to do a lot of analyzing and beginning to separate yourself from your emotions. So when we start to critically think about our own life and our own mind, we're able to then apply those same skills of critically thinking with all areas of your life. Going back to feeling like we're on autopilot. Typically we're in, when we're in that survival state, the front part of our brain goes offline. So again, meaning that we're acting out of impulse. This is when our fight, flight and freeze comes into play. And that often happens when something overwhelms our body. And so when we haven't been self-aware for a long time and we're just acting in an active survival state, we're not actually thinking critically. We're thinking out of impulse of maybe what worked for us in the past, but but that might not be what would be the most beneficial in the present moment or moving forward. So building your sense of self-awareness helps you think critically towards other situations in your life, but it also helps you think more critically in your own mind and things that are going on in your own life. Is this thought something that's worked for me in the past? Is this action something that worked for me in the past? Is it currently helping me right now in the present moment? Or am I just sticking to the same thing because that's the only capacity that I have to do so? Or is this the only way that I know how to do so? So the more that we become self-aware and start to ask ourselves those questions, the more that our brain will start to think differently. The more that we'll shift out of that state of survival and instead switch it into living, being in the present moment, being in your body which also allows your mind to turn off in a sense that allows you to have the control instead of your brain always controlling your thinking and your actions. And going off that same theme, my fourth point is that it allows you to make better decisions. When we become more self-aware, it improves your decision-making skills. 
And that is a huge benefit of becoming self-aware. Because when your decisions are better, your life is better. But not only just better, but it's better in a way that serves you. Because I think oftentimes when we don't have a lot of self-awareness or we have low self-awareness, we're often making decisions and doing things based on what we think will just keep us safe or might please other people. But at the end of the day, we are the ones that are directly impacted by the decisions that we make. And the better relationship that we have with ourselves, and the more clear that we're able to see ourselves and our reality, the better ability we're going to have those decisions, the decision-making skills that are going to improve our life. The fifth point that I have here is that it allows you to have better leadership skills. If you were to ask yourself right now, who is your biggest leader? Who is someone that you look up to? Isn't it true that you would want them to be able to make good decisions? Wouldn't you want them to be able to listen to you, your fellow coworkers or your team, whoever it is, with empathy? Wouldn't you want them to be able to think critically and to problem solve? Those are all the points that we've touched on so far, which has led to this one, which is better leadership skills. Because I truly think that if we aren't able to make a good decision, if we aren't better to have, if we can't operate at a space with empathy, if we can't think critically and problem solve, we're truly not going to be the best leader. Because we are so stuck in our own mind and our own body and acting out of impulse that we can barely carry the weight of our own life and our own thoughts, yet alone to carry that for other people. And so the more self-aware we become, And the more that we deepen that relationship with ourselves, not only, again, are we able to show up for the best version of ourselves, but we're also a better leader. We're showing up differently. We're able to carry maybe other people that are less self-aware and to improve them on their journey of becoming more self-aware. So better leadership abilities is a huge one and something that I have definitely struggled with. I would consider myself as a quote-unquote leader in my businesses, but I definitely wasn't showing up in the way that I valued a leadership to show up. And that was a hard pill for me personally to swallow because we don't want to admit to ourselves that we aren't showing up as the best version of ourselves. We don't want to admit that we're not showing up great for other people. But the thing is, is until we have those honest and hard conversations with ourselves, nothing is going to change. Nothing is going to pivot. And when we get to that point where we feel stuck and we feel like we have nowhere to grow, That is indeed where we will stay. Because if we have the mindset that we are perfect and we have it all together, you're never going to grow and you're never going to change because we never will have it all together and we never will be perfect. And so becoming self-aware of where you're at, but also where you're trying to go is very humbling in a sense. And it allows you to show up as a true and honest leader and gives other people the permission to look up to you in that light. Because if we just act like we have it together all the time, Guess what? Those people on our team are going to feel less than if they feel like they don't have it together all the time. It's about setting an example of how you want other people to show up as well. And if you don't think that you're showing up in the way that you'd want other people to show up, only you have the conscious ability and the ability to change that and to shift that and to put in the work. The next one that I'm going to talk about is more self-control. And this could really go in a lot of different directions. But with having more self-awareness, it also involves being able to catch and name your emotions and not necessarily reacting to them. So what I mean by that is if we don't know that we're angry, if we just feel it, we feel off, but we can't actually name that it's anger. We might be, be reacting to people around us in a state of anger and not even realizing that we're doing it. This was something that I was doing all the time. For me, it wasn't anger though. It was resentment. Resentment towards the world. And any time that I would be triggered and feel that feeling, I would just shut down. And that would allow me to have no sense of self-control because I didn't even know that I was feeling it in the first place. And we often then get lower self-confidence because we feel like there's something wrong with us. We feel like our body is out to get us, our mind is out to get us. But the more that we're able to name our emotions and tend to them and not react to them, the more self-control we're able to have. For example, if we notice that we get triggered and we can catch that, we could potentially say to someone, 
You know, I'm noticing that what you just said kind of threw me off for a minute. Do you mind if I take a moment to just tend to myself? Or I'm not really in the right mind space right now to answer that question. Do you mind if I report back in a few minutes? The more that we're able to have more self-control and to speak what we need, again, it doesn't only fill us up, but it also allows us to have more self-respect towards other people. Because oftentimes we lash out at other people based on our emotions of something that's happened in the past. It wasn't anything that that specific person did to you, but your mind found that it reminded yourself of something that has happened in the past. And so you can see a theme with a lot of these is that this is a trickle effect because how we show up for ourselves is indeed how we will show up and represent ourselves in front of other people. And so the more that we're able to have that self-control, not only are we being more respectful of ourselves, but we're being more respectful of other people. That our negativity and our traumas isn't for them to carry. That's not for us to lash out on them. But it is our responsibility to catch ourselves doing that so that we are showing up in the best way. The next one that I want to share with you guys has been honestly a life-changing one for me the last couple of weeks. And that's your ability to increase self-change or to change a habit. We'll call it that. Your ability to change a habit. Because when we're able to develop the skills of being able to analyze the effects of what we're doing, so catching ourselves, we're actually developing an increased ability to change our habit. Because when we're able to catch ourselves doing something and analyze why we're doing it, so again, the effects of what we're doing, we're able to put in the action to change our habits. And this was something that was huge for me, especially with my relationship with food. I am someone who will not eat anything until late in the afternoon. And then I'll notice myself feeling kind of sluggish, a little resentful, a little angry, a little down, low energy. And then I'll catch myself and I'll eat and I'll feel better. And then the next day I'll come around and I'll do the same thing again. And I'll do the same thing again. And it's almost like self-sabotage in a way. And I do have a background, I will say, or I have a past with eating disorders. And so food has something has been something that's always kind of been an iffy subject for me and something that's been hard to take control of. But the more that we're actually able to analyze what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it and where that comes from, it leads us and gives us the permission to actually change that habit. It empowers us. What I'm doing with my relationship with my with food is actually a very toxic trait and dangerous to myself. And I'm starting to learn and do more research and find out why it is so important that I eat in the morning and why I do eat every couple of hours, but not specifically just eating, but eating the right foods for me and my body and my lifestyle. But I don't think that until we have a strong level of self-awareness, we're able to change habits because we just don't have the capability to notice routines and the things that we're doing. We get so stuck in doing something because again, that's just worked for us for so long But again, until we have that self-awareness to make that shift, we likely won't change it because it's also a scary thing to tap into when you don't have the capability to have that self-awareness. So another benefit of self-awareness is that it increases your ability to change a habit or a lifestyle. The next one I'm going to share with you guys is something that I think is just so beautiful when it comes to self-awareness, and that's that it gives you a higher sense of self-esteem. And if we really just think about those two things, self-awareness and self-esteem, I do truly think that they do go in hand in hand. And higher self-esteem truly is another benefit of self-awareness. I think all these are all benefits, but I think that this is one of the biggest ones because when we have higher self-esteem or higher confidence, we truly do just show up differently. We We show up for ourselves and we show up for other people, but in a different context. And I think that that's something... That's so beautiful because self-esteem is a natural product of confidence, which is exactly what self-esteem breeds. Because when we have a high level of self-awareness, we're able to identify our strengths and our weaknesses. And when we do that, we don't keep ourselves small anymore, but we also aren't arrogant. We're staying in that happy medium place. And when we get to that point, we're able to grow a growth mindset. 
And with a growth mindset, again, we're able to realize that quote unquote failures, my favorite question to ask ourselves is, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? But when we have a growth mindset and realize that failure is just a step of the journey, it just allows us to see what didn't work to open the door for maybe something else that is going to work. And when we are able to have that growth mindset and go through the failures, it allows us to have an incredible amount of persistency and belief in yourself, which then leads to building your self-esteem. I like to think of it all like one big circle that all flows into each other. But without that self-awareness and that validation of yourself in the beginning, that circle won't begin. Because oftentimes at that point, our self-esteem is coming from validation from others, actions from others. But the thing about that that I've learned over the years is that that's not consistent. And that can't continue for the rest of your life. Because at some point, somebody's not going to validate you or somebody's not going to encourage you. And it's going to cause you to fall off the bail wagon. We need to have that initial belief in ourselves. That way, nobody can take that away from us and nobody else has the control to manipulate our life. It starts with you. Yes, it's great to have other people cheer us on. Yes, it's great to have other people pour into us. But we need to make sure that we are the backbones of our own self-esteem. We are the ones that are putting in the work to grow that relationship with ourselves. The ninth point that I want to share with you guys is that having high self-awareness allows you to have a better overall picture of the painting or a better overall perspective. Because when you take time to analyze all the different facts of a problem and you come at it with a critical thinking and a sense of creativity and then you put empathy into that and then you have a better overall perspective. When we're just looking at something from one state of mind of where we're operating at and again if we have low self-awareness and we just look at something quickly, we're often only looking at it from one lens. But when we can grow that capacity and have more empathy and have more critical thinking and you can start to see how all these points tie in together, we're able to have a better overall perspective because we're able to hold more space to look at things differently. When we have better self-awareness, we're also able to be more creative because we're able to think outside the box because it feels safe enough to do so. And with anything in life, we really do need to be able to look at it from different perspectives. Things in life don't only just have one perspective, which is why I absolutely love debating with people. A healthy debate. Because I find it so fascinating that we can all be humans living, quote unquote, the same experience, but we can all see things so differently based on our upbringing, what we went through, our perspective, our self-awareness. And so the higher our self-awareness is, we're able to see things from a different perspective, but we're also able to be kinder to others when they have a different perspective. It allows us to open our minds to think differently, that there isn't just one way of thinking. And the last point that I have on here is increased gratitude for yourself. Just think of self-awareness for a moment. Think of yourself right now in this moment in your body. I want you to go into your body for a moment and bring self-awareness to yourself. Are you hungry? Are you full? Are you tired? Are you lonely? Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you resentful? Are you excited? Do you feel pain anywhere? What's your breathing like? Are you deep breathing? Are you shallow breathing? What's on your mind? Where are you? These are all questions that allow us to become more self-aware. And next week, I'm going to be going through a bunch of questions to ask yourself to become more self-aware But when we're able to do that, we're able to find more gratitude for ourselves. Because when we're able to check in with ourselves and give our body what it needs, our body will then thank us in return. And when we're able to shift our outlook on life just a little bit for the positive, the universe will start to show you all those things in return. It will start to show you better people, kinder experiences. And I know this to be true because just in the last two weeks of shifting my perspective and developing my sense of self-awareness, I have had so many incredible people walk into my life. I have been waking up just with lighter shoulders. By pouring love into yourself and becoming more self-aware, I truly do think it is the recipe for living the most optimal life. 
Because at the end of the day, the only person that we're promised in this world, the only thing that we're promised is ourself. We are stuck with ourselves until it is our last day on earth. And so becoming self-aware is something that I think we all go through life without thinking of. But the more that we bring awareness to our life and we focus on those 10 things of why it's so important to grow our self-awareness, I think it gives ourselves that permission to begin the journey. And the last thing that I'll say here is I often think that it's not talked about. It's not taught to us that having a high sense of self-awareness is important. We're not taught that we can get stuck in a survival state. We're not taught that we can be stuck in our childhood experiences. We're not taught to come back to our present body and to shift our thinking to how we're living now. And that is why I'm so passionate about my podcast and about sharing with you all, because as I learn things, I want to share them with all of you who maybe have not opened your mind to that perspective yet, or maybe haven't been around people or places or things that open your mind to those things. And so I truly hope you take today and you take some time to sit with yourself. How is your self-awareness? How can it grow? How can it flourish? How can it become better one thing at a time? And as I mentioned, next week, I'm going to be taking you guys through some questions to ask yourself, to deepen your sense of self-awareness and to get to know yourself better. The more that we know ourselves better, the more that we're able to let, or sorry, to not let other people manipulate and control our reality, our world, and our decisions. I want to thank you guys so, so much as always for tuning into this week's episode. Today is actually April Fool's, so I might have to go think of a prank that I can do on somebody because I'll never pass up an opportunity to get a good laugh. So happy April, everybody. Happy spring, and I look forward to chatting with you all next week. Bye, you guys. Thank you all so, so much for tuning into this week's episode of Tiny Talks. If you're looking to connect, you can find me on Instagram at jessiebrown13. I look forward to chatting with you all next week. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.